your bed. Today we are accompanied by Rob, the project manager, leaving out of Portsmouth with Captain Jack, heading over to Star Island to get these machines moved over to Breakwater 2. Big day today, Rob. Yeah, buddy. Moving some machines around. As you can hear the excitement in his voice, Rob is ready to get this day over with before it even begins. Countless nights staying up late thinking about all the possibilities that could go wrong and how to mitigate the problems. Today is one of the most important days of the project and we need everything to go as planned. And we are back on Star Island. Today, the mechanics have to get the 395 ready to hop on board the barge and make its way over to Smutty Nose Island. Let's take a walk over, see Luciano and the crew as they have an attentive cleanup before the mode. So I, ideally, ideally the 374 stays over here and the Panther can get off on its own and just be done with the counterway in it. I got you. But there's a few things to do before that. We got to put blasting mat on the um, on the ledge itself. Yeah. So the hull the hull of the landing craft has a nice some nice padding. Because mm -hmm. he's worried about that weight. He's never done this much weight. So the hull is probably gonna drop a bit on the lid. As Rob and Dennis meet up with Luciano, they develop a plan of attack for the day. They're short chains and need somebody to go back to the mainland and pick up 10 20 foot chains before getting started. As of right now, Luciano needs 10 chains from the mainland. But as we go over some more plans, we soon realize we're gonna need more than just that. We're running out of Baxters as well. And we need this island spotless before we get over to Smutty Nose Island. Some of them are cutting them up and they're not bad. We got enough Baxters? I don't know how many Three more is there. You only have three more? On a normal project, this is no problem. 
Somebody runs to the store, grabs some more. On the island, it's a whole different situation. Yes, sir. Did I take him out? No. Hey, Rob. Good morning to you, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I got a lot going in my head. I'm sorry. Please help me. I see. These chains are at Harbor Freight. I don't know how many of them you can find in the back. It's, it's the 20 footers. They don't have a. How much are they? $100 a box. They don't have the hook, but you can just, you know, make a little. Got you. Got it. Well, no, listen, you got the, you got the lock, so just make a loop. We'll, we'll be able to trade. You got one in the top. They have two locks on each end. Oh, okay. So you make a loop and choke it. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's what the other one. Show him the other one and see if that's what he's got. Mago! That's good, you're having fun. ramp was. Pickering should reach right here. That's still three feet of water right there. So they can at high tide nine more feet. Probably line them all. So the plan is to get them in here during high tide? Get them in at high tide. They got a a reach of about 100 feet. Get the rest of this disaster out of here. So as Luce and the crew continue on with the extensive cleanup on Star Island, the idea is to have the blasting mats that we will reuse within reach for Riverside and Pickering to grab it with the crane and bring it over to Smutty Nose Island. Still with a mass quantity of old blasting mats left to pick up, Luciano is on a time crunch. With the barge arriving in less than two hours, we got a lot to do. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week as Luce and the rest of the crew get the machines ready for the barge and moved over to Smutty Nose Island. <laughs>